Hi guys, Andy here again from Mad Lad Designs with another tabletop playthrough and of course it's going to be Tiny Epic Defenders. As you can see, um, I've got all the bits out ready there. Well, not particularly ready because this video is going to be for the setup of Tiny Epic Defenders. Okay, so let's get right into it. I'm going to move all these out the way. And I'm going to start by picking the characters. I'm going to be playing a four player game. Let's take a quick flick through these characters. And I'm going to be picking these at random. Now, I can't just turn them over and shuffle them because it's got the character out on the back. So I am going to shuffle them, but I'm going to turn away. So you guys will see me shuffle and pick characters but I'll have my eyes closed and so I won't know what I'll be picking so at the moment I'm just going through them I can I can see what I'm going through so but once I've gone through these right so I'm gonna, I am going to turn them over even though I'm going to have my eyes closed uh, right there's a shut I'm going to shuffle like so and then we are going to pick four different characters I hope you can see this on the camera so I'm going to pick one, and I'm just going to throw them down. Two. Three. Uh, four. I'm going to put the rest to one side. So, what four characters have we picked? We have the Necromancer. And for one action, whoops, we can throw it on the floor. For, for one action, I may restore a destroyed outer region to one threat level and remove its destruction card. However, the threat levels of all the other regions are increased by one. So if we do have a destroyed region, we can bring it back. Normally you can't. Once it's destroyed, it's gone. But this will allow me to bring it back. But all the other regions have to have their threat increased. Okay, next we have the Goblin Assassin. And passive. Passive action, well, passive is not an action. Passive is always on. It's something you can always do. It doesn't cost an action. It's something you can do. Once per round and only when you defend, you may instead ignore the enemy or die enemy card you defended as if it were never played. Place the enemy under your hero card until the round is over then add it back to your deck. Okay so we can skip one enemy per round. Interesting. Then we have the Bard Halfling. For action. If an adjacent outer region has an action you may use it. Pay only the action point cost of that region's ability so I'm guessing for an action I can pick an outer region outer regions action no matter where I am and use it by paying that action for that ability and I think lastly we have an elf commander once per turn gain an additional action point if the, another hero is in the capital city so that's an always on thing and for one action for two action points you may move any hero one region okay so let's see if I can put these here four. so there's our four characters next we will choose our sides because these are all double sided and I think each side does a different thing apart from the capital city I think the capital city is exactly the same so I'm going to put that down there uh, I'm going to move out a bit and I'll show you how 
I choose which sides of the cities of the locations I'm going to use and I do it like this there you go <laughs> that's how I randomly pick them so I'm going to put them all in the correct places and we'll come back okay so I have set up the heroes I've given them their life points the bard is blue the assassin is green the necromancer is yellow and the commander is red there they are on there so let's take a look at what things are on the locations so this is what we've picked planes it costs no action points to move out of the planes so if, I, if I'm on here I can move anywhere for free as long as it's either here here or here then we have the coast for one action I can move to any region including the capital city and of course we have the flames as well the threat level on each one ready to go the desert at the end of every round any heroes in the desert lose one health in the forest if the threat level in the forest is zero you may spend two action points to reduce the threat level in the capital city by one now that's going to come in handy and then we have mountains place your meeple on the circle next time an enemy or die enemy attacks the mountains move off the circle to defend without sacrificing health okay so have our characters have our locations the next thing we need to set up are our turn decks our horde deck and our destruction deck all right then for well the first thing we're going to do i think is we're going to choose our boss monster i have no idea i'm going to give him a shuffle a mix and our boss monster is going to be this one whichever this one is the rest can be put off to one side then we have our artifacts so when we defeat a dire enemy we can choose an artifact card those are shuffled and placed somewhere with an easy reach I'll place those there and now we have to set up our three remaining decks okay so we need to separate all our enemy cards all our dire enemy cards and I think these should be our hero turn cards okay so give these a shuffle Good mix up and choose three for our turn deck. One, two, three, and then three for our horde deck. Uh, I'll give those a shuffle and then pick one, two, three, and the rest go into our destruction deck. So next we get our die enemies. And depending on how difficult you want the game to be, depends on how many dire enemies you put in. If you put one dire enemy in, it's easy, or supposed to be, he says throwing them about. If you put two dire enemies in, it's medium, three is hard, four, well, good luck if you put four dire enemies in. <laughs> I am only going to put in one. Yes, just the one and it's going to be that one so this is going to go in our horde deck which is this one this is our turn deck this is our horde deck the rest of these now go in our destruction deck next we're going to take these now because we've got four players we are just going to use the four colors these don't come into play if you are playing with three players then one of these comes into play if you are only playing with two players then both of these come into play and these 
particular things you have three actions when this is drawn and it can be split among the players so it's not all on one player one player can take one action another player can take another action one player can take two actions <laughs> and another player can take one action it's all split that's why there's all different colors but because we're playing with four players these are not used and these go in our destruction deck but these four will go into our turn deck which is this one like so oops looked at the enemies then almost but this is then shuffled and completely mixed like so and this is put down ready for us to play I'll put that there the horde deck is shuffled and mixed and placed on top of the boss monster and then we have the boss monster's health and that just goes to one side for now okay we have everything set up ready for a game of tiny epic defenders we have all our locations out we have our heroes ready to do battle we've got our turn deck we've got our horde deck uh, and the destruction deck is over to one side because we won't only need that when the locations are destroyed we have our meeples ready in the capital city we are good to go so join me in the next video guys when we will begin playing tiny epic defenders and trying to save that capital city so until then, I will catch you guys later.